Beyond Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome inside episode 414 of the Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Ross Levitan in the heat of the desert in Paradise Valley alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains and it's a Senators game day. Can you believe it? It's been a while and what a tease getting three and four to start the year but now the former captain has arrived. The time is nigh some would say for the second return to Ottawa for Eric Carlson. So naturally, we are going to look back at the trade that shook up the franchise. September 13th, 2018, we'll go through all the pieces that went back and forth. Remember, this trade took three years to complete. Zach Ostapchuk is a part of it. So we'll recap all of that. Where does Chris Tierney rank in terms of leading scorers of all San Jose Sharks since then? We'll have the answers to all those questions. Plus, we'll get into our Locked On player to watch in tonight's game. All that and more, this is the Locked On Senators Podcast, your team every day. Today is Thursday, October 21st, and full disclosure, we're recording the night before. So, when people are listening to this, Pilsy, will Brady Kachuk be captain? of the Ottawa Senators. I sure hope so, Ross. I mean, I think uh, there's a lot of people that are saying, oh, just wait till after Carlson, or it doesn't have to happen uh, immediately. But, like, if if you know, and we think we know, that Brady Kachuk will be the next captain of your Ottawa Senators, what are what's the wait worth? Like, why wait? Like, you might it might as well have been done yesterday. Like, if you know this guy's going to be your captain... Get those wheels in motion, let it be known, and let the kids start leading because Brady Kachuk already has been leading this team, already is the face and heartbeat of this franchise. Why not just make it official? Actually, you know what, Ross? They're probably still waiting on their uh, jersey press to arrive. I guess that's why they haven't (laughs) done it yet because they're like, we can't get the C on there. We'd love to, but we can't. So Pat wrote in, shout out Pat, at far underscore is. He said he agreed with you about the Ottawa San Jose, the little bit of animosity, right? You think back to the Mike Hoffman gong show, but it goes further back. Ottawa native, 67's legend, Doug Wilson, who used to draft almost exclusively from the 67s. Shout out also to Brian Kilray for developing so much talent, Logan Couture and and the like of them, who are still a part of that organization. But... He was also the GM going back to the Danny Heatley saga. So there is a long history between these two teams. They came into the league very similar times. I think the yeah. Sharks were 94. I, I could be a little off on 95, that. 95, but, but right around there, yeah. Yeah, similar situations. They both made it to a Stanley Cup final. Both yet to get over that hump. So why not? But no, all that aside, I don't think Eric Carlson should play any decision into yeah. Brady Kachuk being named captain. Get this C on him. However, he's got his headshot and there's an A on his sweater. So uh, at least for now, I would expect him to have the assistant ca- alternate captain on his sweater for at least the first little while. Why yeah. not? And I like this theory too. Why not have him be named captain a little closer to to Christmas and there's a weekend coming up in November where the Sens have two home games and the second one is against the Calgary Flames wouldn't that be a little excitement getting an added level to the Kachuk Bowl yeah I like that for sure and uh Rossi you mentioned uh Brady got his new headshot which is great because let's be honest Every single Ottawa Senators player needed a new headshot after last year. And I just downloaded Chell for PS4, and it is tough that those are the headshots they had to use. So in the game, they got the fishbowl headshots for all the Senators players. That is tough. So I'm glad we're moving past that. And now all these players, like Connor Brown's headshot from last year, this year is like night and day. So I'm glad we're past that. So the Senators, November 13th, at home to the Pittsburgh Penguins in the next afternoon... Matthew and the Calgary Flames are in town. And of course, that would lead to some nice jersey sales and all that leading up to Christmas. But we know Brady's the leader and he's in the lineup. What are your expectations for his first game in way too long? I'm going to have tempered expectations just because 
I think fans sometimes minimize the importance of uh, camp, preseason, all those kinds of things. I think for the players, it is a big deal. So I think, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he if he is going to make an impact, it's going to be in his office, right? It's going to be right in front of the net. He's going to bang in a rebound. But uh, looking at uh, getting in a scrap, I doubt it. Throw, throwing his uh, weight around, throwing hits, maybe the first couple shifts, but I'm... I'm going to have tempered expectations and I'm not expecting a massive night from Brady. However, I am expecting a massive night from Timmy. Timmy's been here since uh, since Dev Camp. There's no excuse for him and he's been very close and this would be a great revenge game to get that monkey off your back and open your account for this season for Tim Stutzla. He played, I believe, I'm talking about Brady, 194 consecutive games. Remember, he missed the first few games of the year. He had an injury early on. I believe it was an ankle, but whatever it was, he missed some time. He didn't miss a single game in the COVID-shortened season, nor in the 56 games. Sorry, they're both COVID-shortened seasons. The one that ended early, the pandemic-shortened season, 71 games, then he played all 56 last year this is a player who takes care of his body off the ice he's always the top right up with nick paul obviously nick paul does it all he's winning the fitness test and all that but brady's right up there so speed isn't necessarily his calling card i think that's fair to say so where i think he's bound to make the biggest impact is on the power play and we know ottawa clicking at 44 percent, albeit early but doesn't he just add so much element to that power play with his presence in front of the crease Oh, yeah, for sure. Big body, a guy that uh, loves just duking it out with defensemen in front of the net. He has no issue with that at all. And he's someone that's going to create space for his teammates. Like just like you said, the presence of him out there, like other team, other teams, opponents, they know he's going to play physical. They know he's a big kid. They know he likes to be in front of the net and create space for himself. So having said that, they're going to have to focus in on Brady a little more than they would let's say a Nick Paul, if he's in front of the net um, doing that same job on the power play. So that inherently will create space for the rest of his teammates. And hopefully, I mean, I would say the biggest, the biggest kind of um, factor on the Sens first power play is Josh Norris. I want to get Josh Norris at space. I want the Sens to cycle that puck and then be able to tee up Josh Norris on that far side by the hash marks for that one timer. If they can, get everything angled towards him. That shot is incredible. And I think Brady in front of the net is going to make it even harder for the goalies to see that shot. We don't know who will be in goal just yet. Follow along at Send Central on Twitter. We'll bring you that information as soon as we get it. But we know it's either going to be Aiden, De- Aiden Hill, who's never played against the Ottawa Senators, the former Arizona Coyote. He's in his first year with the Sharks. Or... James Reimer, yes, the old foe from his days with the Toronto Maple Leafs. He, on the other hand, has played a lot against the Ottawa Senators yep. and had a lot of success, Billsy. But as we spoke about in yesterday's show, you can throw that all right out the window. But just like we did with Kudobin, who was 8-1 and one against Ottawa, and like we did with Peter Mrazek, who I believe was 7-1 and one against Ottawa, in 26 games, this is a decent sample size, eh, Bills, for James Reimer? 15, 6, and 3 with a 926 save percentage. Would you be worried if Reimer's in net? I almost say that tongue in cheek. I mean, not worried, but those are really great numbers over a big four shutouts. Uh, oh man, yeah, over a big sample size. He doesn't so. have he has three shutouts against Montreal, I should say, but he has more shutouts against Ottawa than any other team in a career that I think this might shock a lot of people. James Reimer's played 385 NHL games. Yeah, I mean, he's been around. And uh, like he was a big part of Carolina's goaltending duo, especially with Mrazek missing time. And uh, Nedeljkovic just kind of popped off last season. So he played a decent amount there. And he was in Florida as well, right? Yes, he was. Yeah, so he he had some decent backup roles, but yeah, good on James Reimer, uh, Optimus Rhyme, uh, definitely keeping <laughs> the, keeping his career going. And hey, San Jose is not a bad landing spot uh, location wise if you got the cash to afford the living expenses. They're also two and zero this season. They've got a pair of hard fought wins, both over Canadian teams. First, it was at home over the Winnipeg Jets, the team that they were down two nothing early but battled back and then a complete beatdown of the Montreal 
Canadiens. So hopefully they had a good night in Montreal partying, maybe ended up at Schwartz's at a, a you know, a nice. ungodly time. You and I ended up at Schwartz's. That was unreal. No free ads. Yeah. But that being said, hey, they're coming to Ottawa. They're going to be well rested. Carl's going to have some home cooking back there. And it's going to be exciting. Like this is a guy who say what you want about the way it left, but Eric Carlson will always be a real big part of of Ottawa Senators franchise history. Like this guy leads all defensemen in every category. He was a superstar when he was here. He was a superstar. And it was one of the biggest trades in franchise history. And the only reason I can say one of is because there's another trade where they received a Hall of Famer and a guy who is on the cusp of that in Chara and Jason Spezza. So we'll get into a full breakdown of that trade and then finish off with our locked on players leading in to the Senators' fourth game of the season they are currently two and one on this young season so you know that that gets us extremely excited we also get excited when we can chat about our friends at bet online the number one sports book of the locked on podcast network and for good reason as well because they have everything you want to wager on i'm talking team totals i'm talking uh, awards i'm talking player props and the over under life's too short to bet the under so make sure you go to bet online have some fun put your money where your mouth is and because you're a listener of the locked on senators podcast you're entitled to a 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit how great is that think about it 50 percent of whatever you put in is bang right into your account put in 200 dollars, bingo bango bongo that's 100 free play dollars right there for you. So don't sit on the sidelines anymore. Get into the action and don't forget the promo code locked on. Promo code locked on to receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. It's Bet Online, your online sports book experts. And make sure you're locked on, Senators, wherever you download your podcast, whether it's Spotify, Apple, Odyssey, or you can subscribe on YouTube. That's where you can find a lot of great interviews as well with Tim Stutzla. I'm talking, you. Um, who's our most recent? Shane Pinto. How could I forget? By the way, Alex since it's Formanton. a incoming, Tyler yep. Boucher, who got on the board in NCAA. We can actually put together pretty well an entire roster, and we did just that at Sense Central on Twitter. And how about our fourth line, Pilsy? Dennis Bonvi, Cody Bass, and Matt Cassian. Oh, Look out. Wanna, yeah, wouldn't want to catch those guys in an alleyway or in a highly contested game. Talk about a highly contested trade, though, Pilsy. I mentioned September 13th, 2018, the Senators traded their four-year captain, their player that they drafted later than they should in the first round in 2008, the best defenseman in that draft class. And I'm looking at you, Drew Doughty, and I'm looking at you, Alex Petrangelo. And I'm that draft class, by the way, nasty for defensemen. But who's the cream of the crop? It's Eric Carlson. That being said, yes, injuries have played a role. But Pilsy, when you pull up, let's first say what the Sharks got in this trade. And it's the extension that really makes this pop. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see this little graphic we put up. Pilsy, why don't you run through it for us? Yeah, I mean, uh, this is going to be a quick one for what uh, the San Jose Sharks received. But they received Eric Carlson and AHL, AHL All-Star. Francis Perron, who is now in the Allsvenskan League in Sweden. So really, if we're talking about pieces left over here, Eric Carlson is the only piece left of the Carlson trade with the Sharks. And yeah, you mentioned it, Ross. It's that contract that really makes this tough. Like right away, they signed him to an eight-year, $92 million contract, $11.5 million AAV. And there's full no move uh, clause all the way through that contract till 2027. So, he, should we show gonna, them the signing bonus? Yeah, the, the signing bonuses are wild. So already, what's been paid, 11 million and 10 million have been paid. And I'm sure that year, actually the nine million so, also has been paid. So you're looking so at 20 30, million in signing 30 bonuses. 30 million, 30 math guy here. 30 million in signing bonuses already paid. Next year, he's got 10 million. The year after that, one million. Another year after that, one million. Then five million. Then six million. We're totaling fifty-three million dollars of signing bonuses in his ninety-two million dollar contract. That is absolutely wild. And yeah, I think uh, that contract's going to be tough come twenty twenty-five, twenty twenty-six. Well, fourteen point four percent, fourteen point five percent of his team's cap hit 
is on him. And then when you triple down with Vlasic making seven million and Brent Burns making Burns eight. eight million, whoo, that's a, that's a lot. But I mean, this this guy's a hell of a talent. We saw it against Montreal the other night. Like this guy, when he's on his game, it's short hair Carl season. Hey, eh? that's how he, he won his first Norris Trophy back when he was twenty. Short hair years Carl old. is much better in my opinion. Much yeah. better. And I used to always yell this stat as often as I could, but I truly do believe even at this stage in his career, maybe the back nine isn't as good as the front nine. To me, Eric Carlson is a Hall of Famer. What's your reaction to that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to, to not get him in there. But then you look, is he going to win his Stanley Cup? Probably not. Gold, did he get a gold? No, he wasn't a part of Sweden's Silver. gold medal. Yeah, so silver and Sochi. Yeah, so silver and Sochi. I mean, that's not nothing, but usually, usually it's the gold medals that get it done. So, and then how many Norrises does he have? Two. So this is where it really gets interesting, and the reason why I believe he is uh, a Hall of Famer, and that is the only players who have multiple Norris oh, trophies. Yeah. <laughs> I know who are this not stat. in the Hockey Hall of Fame are Eric Carlson and Duncan, Duncan Keith. Keith. Well, guess what? Duncan Keith has three Stanley Cups, he's two gold me. medals. I think yeah. <laughs> I think it's pretty safe to say that he's going to go in there. The others, Larry Robinson, ever heard of him? Brian Leach, Rod Langway, Denny Potve, Pierre Pilot, that's an old school throwback name, Paul Coffey, Chris Chelios, Ray Bork, Nick Lidstrom, Doug Harvey, and Bobby Orr. I don't know if you've heard that last name before, but you True. just look at the the – the amount of talent that he is in that class is, is truly remarkable. And the fact that Eric Carlson was robbed of the 2016 Norris Trophy. The he was do doubt a year. He had 82 points in 82 games, Pilsy. That's unbelievable. Yeah, he should have won that year for sure. And yeah, that's the thing. Like, I think when you're looking at defensemen all time, he's got to be up there because the points he put up with the teams he was on is is pretty crazy. He put the team on his back. I mean, in 2017, the guy was playing on one ankle and the things he was doing was out of this world. There was a good, I would say, three-year period where the top three players in the entire world were Connor McDavid, Sidney Crosby, and Eric Carlson. And I think you could have you could have even talked to a Leafs fan who most of the time we try not to when we're looking for uh, arguments and good hockey opinions. But even a Leafs fan would tell you that he would be in the top three for that uh, extended period of time. So that's saying something. Like he was really one of the greatest. There's no doubting that. The 2016-17 one was to me the most wild because you looked at in 2015-16. 66 assists like not no defenseman even had that many points and he had that yeah. many assists adding 16 goals as well and not winning that one because drew dowdy was apparently so much better defensively and carlson was a minus two that year then the next year 2016 17 he still gets 71 points in 77 games and he's plus 10 and the sends go on the run they did and then they gave it to brent burns because his offensive numbers were so good. So it just felt like it was a situation where he couldn't win. Now, that being said, I think we've given Carl his props because the guy was an absolute game changer, a superstar. But when you put out a press release, and I'm going to try to find it because I want to pull it up, but do you remember the press release when at Senators Seven Assets? Remember that's what they called it? They called yeah, it all the assets. assets. Yeah. All the assets that we're going to um, that we're going to help this team. Now, that that being said, these assets turned out to be pretty decent. Here it is. I've got wait, it right now. Wait, 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 the, Ross, before we go, go to what Ottawa receives. Looking back on this trade now, isn't it so head scratching why the San Jose Sharks even did this to begin with? I don't know about you, but when you have you just mentioned Brent Burns won the Norris up against Carlson that year. When you have a Norris caliber defenseman, then a guy as good as Mark Edward Vlasic, and I believe both those guys were signed to their deals, their long-term deals when Carlson was brought in. Why on earth are they going out and getting another defenseman who's going to be on the back nine of his career, has injury problems, and they're going to have to pay him through the roof, and they're going to have to give him set, give up seven assets, like you said, to acquire him? Like when 
Six what assets, is- apparently. It became seven once they signed the With extension. the signing, yeah. With Like, when they were going after John Tavares, that made so much sense. I was like, yeah, they need to go all in to get John Tavares. He's going to complete that team. But when they went all in, all in to get Eric Carlson, that just didn't really quite make sense to me. And I feel like that misjudgment and pushing your chips in to the wrong area at the wrong time is really what caused this downfall for the San Jose Sharks. Like, think about if they don't acquire Carlson and they keep the all the assets, they get Timmy, they get Norris at what he's at now. Think of where that team could be in the Western Conference, yeah. especially the Pacific Division. Like, if they could figure out their goaltending, obviously Martin Jones was hot garbage for... Shout out Martin Jones, though. Sen's favorite. Legend. Years. Years. So, like... If they could have figured out their goaltending, their decor would have been good enough. They would have still had DeMello there. That would have been great. Like that team Tierney would had, have been he, so Tierney much had better. 40 points the year before he got traded. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, so like this was such a weird trade for me. I feel like it was just like a Doug Wilson, like showing off to everyone, like Ottawa just flexing, boy. trying to Ottawa flex boy. on everyone what he's able to do and that he was serious about bringing a championship team. But in my mind, even at the time and even more now looking back at it, this trade makes no sense for the San Jose Sharks. Here's what the Ottawa Senators received in that deal. Chris Tierney, Josh Norris, Dylan DeMello, Rudy Balsers. Those were the four pieces that we knew at the time. The rest were draft picks. The 2020 first round pick. It was 2019 first round pick, but because San Jose made the playoffs, Ottawa had the opportunity to change it to 2020. And that's what they did. It was just that reason that the senators were able to acquire Tim Stutzla. What a what an amazing moment in senators history. The 2019 second round pick here. If you're watching on YouTube, again, the graphics up. Mad Sogard. We put an asterisk here because Ottawa actually acquired the 44th overall pick. Pilsy, how did they trade it up to get Sogard? Yeah, so they traded up. They traded. I've got it here. They was traded pick 44 and 83rd to select okay. Mad Sogard at 37. So they traded 44th and 83rd to move up seven spots to get Sogard. So that being said, Ottawa then received a second round pick in 2021 because Eric Carlson did extend his contract with San Jose. Now, the Senators were two games away from receiving their first round pick in that year, which would have been seventh overall. If the San Jose Sharks had made the Stanley Cup final in 2018, Ottawa would have had their first round pick last year as well, which would have been absolutely wild. Just just think about that for a second. Now, that who being was, said... Wait, wait, wait. Before we, who was selected seventh overall? What draft R- was William that? Eklund. William Eklund. Eklund. Oh, true. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. I know. What could have been? But what was? And just look at all these assets. You think Dylan DeMello, man, maybe some poor asset management, especially with the way Ottawa has their roster constructed right now. He could really fit in well on that right side. Yeah. Well, they get the third round pick and they draft Levy Marilyn. And so that kid Jeez. looks like a complete stud too. I'll let you take it away with Rudy Balsers. Yeah, I mean, oh man, that sucks. Ru- Rudy Balsers was one of those guys. He was stuck in the same area as... Philip Schlappick. Schlappick, I was going to say first, yeah. Vitaly Abramov. Uh, who who else was there? We're missing a couple guys. I think they were moved on from. But there was like three or four guys that were Francis all Perrault. in that area. <laughs> yeah, <Beforehand. laughs> yeah, fair. Yeah, but there was guys that were fringe NHLers, and he just got pushed out, and they had to let him go on waivers. And Logan of course, the, the Sharks pick him up. Yeah, Logan Brown, there's another guy. So the Sharks get him back, which if you're the Sharks, you got to be pretty happy about. He's a pretty good depth piece for them in their NHL lineup. But he was a guy I loved watching in Belfin. and I was really rooting for, rooting for Rudy to get into the mm-hmm. NHL and to play for the Ottawa Senators. But I am glad he's moved on and he's got a good opportunity and, and he's uh, lighting it up. He's keeping red light Rudy going. So shout out Rudy Bolsters. But that one does hurt a little. So Josh Norris wins AHL Rookie of the Year, then has 35 points in 56 games as a rookie in the NHL, and now already has a goal through three games this season. And is a number one centerman. Yes, which Chris (laughs) Tierney is not. Yeah, sure. However, in his, can you get, like, this is how long the trade is. 210 games Chris Tierney has played for the Ottawa Senators. 210 games, Pilsy. And he has more points than he had 
in a 284 games with San Jose. But if you take Chris Tierney's point total, 107 points, four less than Carl, I should say, and you yeah. put it on the San Jose Sharks through that time, he's eighth in team scoring. Eighth in team scoring. So when you look at just this is one of the most lopsided trades in NHL history, especially, I mean, a little bias with Timmy, of course, but start the car because this trade was a complete steal. And when we start our car and it's not working, you head over to rockauto.com, the family business that serves auto parts online, and they've been doing it for 20 years. They have everything from engine control modules, brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil. You can even get your new carpet there. And whether it's your classic or daily drive, get everything you need in a few easy clicks delivered directly to your door. Best of all, the price at rockauto.com are always reliably low and the same for professionals and do-it-yourselfers. Go check out their catalog right now. It's remarkably easy to navigate and unique. And the question remains, why spend up to twice as much for the same price? Had to say it twice because it's so wild. If you don't go to rockauto.com, you should right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. All we ask is that you put locked on in their how did you hear about us box. That way, they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com and tell them Locked On sent you. All right, Pilsy. So it's an Ottawa Senators game day, and it's so nice to play another American opponent. The Senators are on a seven-game home winning streak, Pilsy. So that's nice. What's your prediction for tonight's game before we get into our Locked On player to watch? I got the Sens winning this game. Uh, I think there's just so much coming into it for if you're an Ottawa Senators player. Brady Chuck coming back. Uh, the revenge games of Timmy, Josh, and Chris Tierney. Like, Matt Murray starting. Like, there's there's so much here that are that's kind of, like, being brought to light for the Senators. So, I got them firing on all cylinders. And I think it's going to be closer than, uh, than we'd like, though. I got this being a one-goal game. I'm going to say 4-3 Sens. I was going to say 4-2. Nice. Okay, there we go. Um, so no no low-hanging fruit. None of the revenge game guys. No Brady Kachuk. Someone else. Who are you looking at? Who are you locked on to tonight? Well, I'm going to be locked on to <laughs> Uncle Deli, Michael Del Zotto. Like, this is a guy who he's really – the coach is trying to give him a fair shake. He's trying to give him a long leash here. And I didn't notice much that I liked. I didn't notice much that I disliked. He's just kind of been there. So I'm really going to be watching him to see, all right, is Michael Delzato really good enough that he needs to be in this lineup and Eric Brandstrom needs to be in the AHL and now on the rumored trade block? Like, I, what is so important about Michael Delzato that possibly one of the most valuable assets in this franchise is not getting the ice time he deserves because you got to get MDZ in there. So for me, I'm really going to be trying to watch Michael Delzato. How is he going to be playing with Zaitsev? Zaitsev has been an absolute disaster this year. No matter, I know who he's you making us look pair. bad. He's yeah, we try we bad. try to pump him up, and he sends us back down. But hey, hopefully we can give him a boost here. So really, I'm going to be watching Michael Delzato. But that pair, I'm going to be watching because if if that second pair with Zaitsev and whoever can't fix itself, this team is in a lot of trouble because those are major minutes that are going to be defensive liabilities if we're looking at how they've played so far. Love it. I'm going to be very interested to see how Uncle Deli plays against the San Jose Sharks. Do you want to give your lookout player or should I go with my locked on first? Go with your uh, locked on. I am locked on to a guy whose job might be easier if Delzato has a good night. Matt Murray, for me. He's clearly got great history against the San Jose Sharks, winning a Stanley Cup against them in 2016 now all the characters have changed wait is Patrick Marlowe still on no he's not still with San Jose he broke the record he's off into the sunset yeah yeah he's done so I think it's just Couture and Brent Burns and Mark Edward Vlasic who are still left from that 2016 team for oh and Thomas Hurdle as well but you look at Matt Murray three games against the Sharks in the regular season. He's got great numbers, now small sample size as well. But for me, it's going to be how his rebound control goes, how he's reading the play. Those are the two areas with Matt Murray that scare me the most. So if he comes in and he's catching pucks, which is a part of rebound control, but we know that a well, great sign, whether if he's on his game, boom, he's making good, good glove saves. If he's not, it's hitting the, the palm of his glove and bouncing out for a rebound. And, if that happens, I'm going to be very worried. And 
start the bus and get Philly franchise back up as he was sent down today. Nobody's surprised about that, especially the way Forsberg started the season. There's no chance you put him on waivers right now. So Gus is down to Belleville, and that means it's Matt Murray's net. And the coach gave him a very big co- vote of confidence. And even if I don't necessarily believe DJ Smith when he says it's not, there's no pressure on him to play well, that's him, I think, being a good coach and being a player's coach and, and taking some pressure off of Matt Murray. Because I'm sure Murray's feeling some pressure. So I'm locked on Matt Murray tonight, Pilsy. I think it's going to be an important game to get him on track because if he plays well tonight, then he starts again against the Rangers. And then you can get on a bit of a roll if he can go from there, right? They got a few games coming up. So I'm locked on Matt Murray Pilsy. Who are you most worried about on the other side that maybe could scare Matt Murray? Who are you looking out for on San Jose? All right. I know you threw the the revenge players out of the equation here for Ottawa, but it it would be a lie for me to say I'm looking out for anyone but Rudy Balsers. I mean, I get, I'm going to be watching my guy. I miss, I miss Rudolph. So he's going to be my lookout player. He already has a goal this season. He's, if I'm looking at the lines now, like Rudy Balsers, like I was just talking about him not being able to make a fourth line winger position with the Ottawa Senators, a rebuilding Ottawa Senators team. He's on the second line with this San Jose Sharks team, Ross. And look who his line mates are. William Eklund and Thomas Hurdle. Like, Wow. Talk about being put in a position to succeed by your franchise when you're given that opportunity. So I'm excited to see what Rudolph Balsters has. He's got a couple uh, more seasons under his belt since we last saw him. So I, I got to be watching out for my guy, Rudy. A quick question. If you could give an opportunity, because he's not playing ahead of Stutzler or Brady Kachuk. And I know that the easy answer would be I'd move him to right wing. But if I ask you which player would you rather, Rudy Balsters or Alex Formanton? Oh, Formanton. I mean, I, I got to put my bias away for, for that, for sure. Because now, for, like, Formy's basically my Balsers guy, like, in my head. Yeah. Like, that's the guy Especially that... when he came on the show. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Rudy never came on the show, so we're done yeah. with him. He's he's through. But uh, that's the thing. There was guys where they had to make a decision on. The Sens made their decision, and I think they made the right decision. But Rudolph Balsers is playing the right wing on that second line. So it's not like he, it's not like Rudolph Balsers was like, I will not move to the right side or anything like that. So I've got two, and my second one will lead into my key of the game, and we'll wrap up with that. And again, follow us on Twitter at Sens Central for up to minute stats, news, analysis, and all that good stuff. I'm going to be looking out for Tomash Hurdle because he's in a contract year. Reports are that yep. he wants proof from San Jose that, that they're ready to succeed. And how good, he's would, gone. He look at, he's gone. How good would he look in Ottawa? Like actually, Incredible. Incredible. He would, look, yeah. he, he would look incredible. He's an amazing player. He's won 13 out of 19 face-offs, but he's a point per game, two points, two games. Again, early days when it comes to on-pace season. But he's a... He's a do-it-all type guy. So Definitely. if they can shut down Tomash Hurdle, that's a team that's easily beatable. And then you look at Timo Meyer. That's not a lookout player, but I'm just kind of cruising up and down their lines. A guy who I watched very closely in my two years of living in Halifax. It was him and Nikolai Ehlers. Just unbelievable for the Mooseheads. But he's a big, powerful winger. And he's a guy who you got to ha- have to con- contain. So the Sens left side of their decor, this is a guy who Del Zotto might have to physically go up against. And yep. he doesn't have the size advantage here. So I really want to see how the Sens can contain that. And my other lookout player, this one's mostly for fun because he's a friend turned foe. And I'm not talking revenge game, Pilsy. Nodak Sens alumni, Jasper Weatherby. Remember, oh, we got true. to see him play a bunch with North Dakota last year. He stepped in, scored in his first game. He's got two points in two games. And you know what this leads me into? Oh, this sucks. The face-off battle. Mm -hmm. Jasper Weatherby is a 24, actually. I didn't realize he went to school for that long, but he stepped right in the NHL as a rookie. He's won 10 out of 15 face-offs. He's 66%. If I go up and down the the Sharks lineup, hurdle, 68.5%. Weatherby, 66.7. Logan Couture, 65. Nick Benino, 50%. Those are all the players who have taken five or more faceoffs. Ottawa's is like all 30s and 40s. So win the faceoff battle and you'll win the game. That's my key to victory for Ottawa. Yep, I like that for sure. Um, If I'm going to give a a key to the game, it's going to be to try to outpace this team. Like, I think, like, especially on the back end, I think they're a little slower than most teams. So, really, and 
hey, we got a good chance for it with Tim Stutzla and Alex Formanton on the same line here. Yes. Use that speed to get around this aging decor. And here's another thing with this decor. Like, first pair, Mario Ferrero and Brent Burns. So you get, I don't, no offense to Mario Ferrero, but I don't really know him. So you get, like, a depth defenseman with a Norris winner. Same same thing next line. Jacob Middleton with Eric Carlson. Ooh. I don't know who Jacob Middleton I'm is. I'm pretty sure Eric... he's a former 67, classic Doug Wilson. Surprise. So then you get an another weird balance pair. And then Mark Edward Vlasic is on your third pair with Radim Simic. And I think Simic is actually pretty decent. They signed him to a, a good contract. But to have Mark Edward Vlasic now on your third pair and you're paying him $7 million a year and he's an aging defenseman, like... It just it doesn't make sense what they got going on here. So this is a team that I really want the young Ottawa Senators to use their speed. Not like the forward core for the Sharks is very young as well. Like I think Couture is probably the oldest guy there, and he's what maybe 30, 31, early thirties. Uh, so. they've, they've actually they've added a couple of vets since then. Uh, Cogliano, oh, Cogliano, and Nick Benino. Brent Burns is the uh, the elder statesman at thirty six years old. Right, right. But yeah, up front, like they're very young, like Dolan, yeah. Couture, Meyer, Eklund, Eklund. Hurdle, Balsers, like LeBanc, like all the Jasper Weatherby, Lane yeah. Peterson also is very young. Matthew Nieto, I think he can't be 30 either. So like up front, yeah. they're very young, but like at that back uh, decor can be exposed speed wise, in my opinion. So that's what I want to see this center team do. Love that. Well, everyone enjoy the game tonight. Here's how the Senators are expected to line up. Norris, Kachuk, Batherson, Pinto, Paul, and Connor Brown. Remember, Pinto is due for a Sen Central bump. Make sure you tweet us when, 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 not if, he scores a goal. Chris Tierney with the Speed Demons, Tim Stutzla and Alex Formanton. And then the fourth line, Logan Shaw in between uh, Sanford. And we expect Tyler Ennis, but there's a chance that he's swapped out. For Parker Kelly on defense, it's Shabbat, Zub, oh, hold your nose, Delzato, Zaitsev, and then Holden and Josh Brown. Pilsy, that's all we got for today. Hope everyone enjoys the game, and we'll be back for a full recap tomorrow morning. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senators podcast, your team every day.